It's time for today's episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast, recorded in front of a slightly tipsy studio audience at world-famous Champions Fried Chicken. We will have the latest on Georgia Bulldogs football, basketball, and recruiting. Watch live and send us your questions on the 11 Alive Sports page on Facebook. Be advised this podcast is off the record and not safe for work. Also, be sure to subscribe to the UGA Sports Live Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Hey everybody, welcome to the UGA Sports Live Podcast. My name is Rodney DeBulsi. Uh, sorry for our delay some technical issues here we blame it all on facebook and jake roos uh playing hooky today uh, actually jake roos uh he our recruiting s- uh, superstar is on the road he's out seeing clay webb the five-star interior lineman that uh we're gonna have a pretty good update on him so you need to check that out when you get to ujsports.com my name is roddy debulsi i'm joined by patrick garbin the uh author uh, novelist uh guy who writes a ton of great books uh, they also make very good christmas gifts oh thanksgiving gifts too they, thanksgiving actually, gifts too yeah. yeah so if you need a uh a, a holiday gift go to patrickgarbin.com dot org dot org, org yeah uh, <laughs> he's too slow couldn't get that dot com <laughs> So, no, uh, I got that one, too. But my bookstore is the .org. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, go to patrickgarbin.org and get your books. A lot of Georgia stuff, books you want to read, stuff that you won't find anywhere else. And, of course, the star of the show is Jim Donnan, former head coach of the University of Georgia, Hall of Famer, a uh, guy who led in NCAA football in passing offense and rushing offense, the guy who can call anything. He is going to talk to us about the UMass game and, of course, the upcoming Georgia Tech game, which I know he, he – just knows Georgia has in the bag. Well, we got a good shot, that's for sure. And I'm uh, looking forward to explaining a few things about Tech's offense, maybe to our fans, and also uh, just for the people that can count to, to four, <laughs> because that's what we're going to do. That's the way we're going to explain Tech's offense about uh, you know responsibilities and things like that. But getting glad to have Patrick in here today, and uh, yeah. hope that uh, Jake has some good news on Clay Webb. I, I hope it's. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tough deal getting a kid out of Alabama. That, but, that is going to be tough. But the, yeah. but the big thing is uh, last week we took care of business uh, in a game where it could have gotten a lot sloppy as far as execution, as far as, uh, you know, seeing a lot of penalties. We only had two penalties in a game like that. When you're playing that many guys, it's really – kind of makes you understand how disciplined uh, Kirby's got these guys and how much they prepared for the game. I mean, they got some cheap throws there in the second half. But overall, I just think, uh, again, as Roddy pointed out, I guess he must have been talking to Pittman, but Hill came in and started at guard and did a terrific job. I mean, our line just continues to play lights out. And uh, we're going to need to have a, an offensive productive game this week, keep Tech off the field and not miss any turns because – if we play good on defense, we won't get but maybe nine or ten possessions because they, they just eat a lot of clock. Look, can I ask about the UMass game real quick? Because you know, hey, you I'm, can ask anything. This <laughs> guy over hey, here is just in charge of the commercials. I, uh, speaking of, uh, real quick shout out. I want to give a shout out to Athens Ford for sponsoring our podcast and our website. Uh, Aaron Overhead Doors, also a huge sponsor of our show. So, again, if you got company coming over and your garage doors aren't working, they can fix it for you. Mr. Uh, we're having the um, – uh, IQ IPA from Academia Brewing Company. You know, if you got the family over and you're tired of eating turkey, or you're, you don't want to cook two big meals, swing by Academia. Hang on a second. I, I was about to say we can actually drink these because exactly. <laughs> that's, 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 de- that's the only reason we I do thought this it was show. Decoration. You think I'm here to talk to Coach Don? Come here, break. Uh, Cable East is a big sponsor of our show, and we appreciate them. And of course, um, your pie. And so you know, again. If you're out and you're like, hey, we, we, you know, I'm tired of turkey or we got the big meal coming up tomorrow, I don't want to cook, you can actually put in your order with your pie and go by there. So I uh, just want to give them a quick shout-out. And if you have a question, you're in the 11 Alive Facebook page, go ahead and ask it. We'll try to get to it. Uh, Facebook is having a lot of issues. That's why we're running about 25 minutes late. It's uh, so what a happens of- when they lose a billion dollars in a quarter. <laughs> I mean, they, they're, they're, you know, they're – Cutting back the earning, on services. earnings are down. They just got to cut back. You can't yeah. take Facebook for granted. All right, uh, go ahead and ask your question. I'm gonna go ahead and share this to the people. And if you if you're on a, if you're watching the show, a lot of people missed it when we started. So if you would share it, we'd greatly appreciate that. It's great for, for for those that wonder. And I, I've seen this a few times a bit. But should there be any concern? The fact that the defense did give up, uh, what 27 points, 300 and. 90 yards that receiver had you know over 200 yards because yeah i think like, i think certain plays maybe worry a little bit because they were able to hit a couple on us but uh you know overall uh, th- there's a real 
a dilemma when you're playing a team like that okay. from the standpoint of uh, you want to get your first guys out of there and not get them hurt getting ready for next week and for the championship game. And at the same time, you don't want the team to – you don't want to look bad. And also, uh, we practice a lot of guys all week in a lot of different groupings and try to make sure we uh, that the second and third guys were ready. But it's just kind of a lifetime deal. I know Roddy had mentioned to me that some of those kids that got in the game got their picture made. Roddy took some pictures of them. But mm. can you imagine that the rest of your life to know that you had your name uh, – I mean, had a game right there in Sanford Stadium, got your picture made. So, we played a lot of different players yeah. and that. Uh, it's a little bit concerning uh, that they got that many shots on us. But uh, I think overall, though, when you score 66 points and and play like that without having anybody really uh, look really bad, I mean, there, there were, you know, a couple of those plays were just tremendous execution, that yeah. one double pass. And that kid, as we mentioned, is going to get drafted, and he's, he's, he's up for the Boletnikoff Award. I mean, he's one of the top three receivers in the country based on his stats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, th- speaking of tech and speaking of offense, so do you want to go ahead and – because that's, that's the first thing I'm going to ask Coach Donnan. And right. um, just what the deal what, – what is it in general, um, especially what you did at Oklahoma from – what were you there, 85 to 89? 90, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think the, ma- the main thing is a system-based program that you have a, something in place where you know what you're doing – uh, and you, you, as soon as somebody does something different, you can get to it pretty quickly. And it just gives you a, a chance every week because you're doing something that nobody sees all year long, the different types of blocking schemes, a different kind of execution in the backfield. And uh, it's just something that you, do, you don't get to practice against. So the, the hardest part, though, for, for me as a coach or for Kirby or anybody is getting your scout team to run the same kind of efficiency that the uh, tech team does. You can't even get close to that because most of our guys are recruited as not an option player, so you got to teach them all those fundamentals. But but basically it gets down to this as uh, far as the offense, regardless of what play they run. They run some predetermined plays. They run some all you know auxiliary plays that aren't option plays. But they're, the, the whole point is based on – one, two, three, four. Number four is the guy that they're going to read. That's going to be an inside tackle, or a, a, some, or a, or a defensive end in a three-four defense, and you're going to basically read his shoulders. If his shoulders turn to come, and this that, is the quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah. And the, his shoulders turn and come down. You're going to pull the ball. All right, you've eliminated number four. You go to number three, who has the quarterback. Three could be a defensive end, an outside linebacker, a linebacker, but he's responsible for taking care of of the quarterback. So you're going to read him and either pitch or keep off of him. And then number two is the force man on the perimeter. It could be the safety if he's coming up on the invert, or it could be the corner if he's jamming like cover two. So the the beat back, their, their, their halfback, is going to block number two and then uh, number one is going to be blocked by the wide receiver. So they, if you start from outside in, one takes – you know, the wide receiver takes the guy for the deep, the B-back, the short guy. You pitch off number three and you read number four. Now, what Tech does better than anybody – is they go to the next deal where they run a predetermined give where they don't read anybody and they just hand it to the fullback, you know, Mm. and just try to splatter you. Or they run a predetermined quarterback keep where they block the guy responsible for the quarterback. So instead of pitching off three, they'll block three and take it to the outside. So they know that run's coming by the quarterback. There's no – option right, right. Um, on when they run a what we call a loaded option a, you know a read option is you're going to read four read three and pitch mm-hmm. but a loaded one you're going to take it outside and uh, they they're really comparable at doing that uh, uh, you know from a standpoint against uh virginia tech the, the second team guy got 40 carries doing that they just ran the load option the whole game for us the real key is, and it's not a mission impossible deal. The main thing is playing your technique, mixing up who's got the pitch and who's got the keep. So 
So I say occasionally you, instead of the end just taking the quarterback, number three, he might flare out and then the safety will come inside and catch him off guard and hit the quarterback. Or you'll bring the corner off the edge there real quickly so they can't block him. Or you'll take a linebacker like we did last year and stack him. Roquan had an unbelievable game and and uh, and uh, DeAndre Walker did too, uh, just playing inside out on them. So it's uh, difficult, but it, the, the main thing is preparation. And our scout team is getting better at it. I think Trey Bishop's running some quarterback for him. Uh, I, I don't know that for sure, but I know he, he did some in the spring, and I would think he's doing that now, who did some of that in, in high school. So uh, overall, We'll be ready to rock and roll. Let me ask you that. Speaking of um, who's who was playing quarterback and ready to rock and roll, you know, one thing that I thought interesting that I've heard from Coach Smart, who indicated as much, and even a couple of defenders, is that the scout team last year was able to duplicate Tech's offense really well. Like, for example, when um, DeAndre Walker was asked, how could you stop Tech for – under 200 yards last year on the ground the first thing he said was the scout team apparently they've lost a lot of that scout team talent if you will at least that what could show that kind of offense is would that be any type concern or it's always concerning but it's also one of the things you challenge your players uh that are that are not supposedly the, the the guys that are playing in the game is that you just say, hey, you're going to help us as much as anything, the way you prepare, the way you study text, tape, and you got an assignment and you got to execute it. So uh, one thing we do is we uh, – and Kirby's done it ever since he's been here – is, that, you know, they, they work the scout team a lot in, in the uh, down times of other weeks where, you know, they might be working mm-hmm. on the kicking game. They'll go out there and practice those plays. And uh, their execution of it's pretty good. I mean, they, they can – do it about as good as anybody considering it's not their offense, you know. So, uh, yeah. the big thing to me, though, with the linemen, you hear about the cut blocks, you got to stay low, keep them off your legs, and then wide receiver blocking, you got to be ready for them to stalk block you or cut you. A big key this year, a new rule, which I'm sure really chaps old Paul Johnson is, a wide receiver or a, a beatback cannot block below the waist after five yards. Mm. So that's a good rule for us because you just, you know, those guys kind of, you know, come down there and do that shoe shine block, you know, where they block you around the <laughs> shoes. And that, that's what we used to call it, and, or the arc block. So another thing that our people watch and listen about is watch the releases of the, of the beatbacks. A lot of times they'll release on an arc and try to block the perimeter, but sometimes they'll come inside and block the linebacker. Or sometimes they'll come inside and fake and then go down the middle of the field like they did against us two years ago over here when they hit a couple. So mm. a lot to read, a lot to accomplish, but the the closer you get to the game, the more reps, the more mental work you do, the more walkthroughs, you, it becomes a lot more vivid for the safeties and the linebackers who are the critical issue there of those guys playing inside out and making plays in the alley. You say it's a – they're limited to five yards. That's five yards down the field. That's not like five yards outside the tackle box because you see right. those same cuts way on the perimeter and into the boundary and uh, a guy diving. And I know they have to be kind of square up. In the past, you could almost hit a guy from the side and cut right. his legs. And now they say, look, you got to come from the front. Right. And I think that's also played an issue. But still, and I'm, I'm not trying to sound like a homer here, I still see those cut blocks from a – Almost blind angle, not quite, but close. Yeah, it's, and, it's and, a, and Tech gets away with it because they're the, well, they're a, and the referees know what they're what they're watching, and yeah, I still think they get it. a little they bit more with it. it than anybody else does. Yeah, they. It's just like defensive holding with those guys and bump and run. I mean, you know, what is defensive holding? You know, there's a lot of times where we grab people and Alabama grabs them and anybody's playing press man. Yeah, I was going to say but, press is a so, kind of holding. <laughs> but uh, you could call it just like you call offensive holding. So it'll be interesting to see. It used to be when you played tech uh, over there, there would be a SEC group and they play over here as an ACC group, but I think now they do it. The home team uses their refs. So I, I think, think we so. got I think we got SEC refs this week and uh, we'll see how it goes. But you gotta talk to your players. You can't get get wired into worrying about the 
chop blocking. Or you just got to stay low and do what you're supposed we, to do. Not chop, but uh, a chop blocks when you set a guy up in two on one. But uh, yeah. but those, those cuts, uh, those cut blocks are tough. Which uh, you know, another thing about, uh, I, I believe it was DeAndre Walker again yesterday said that they, and when he said they, I'm guessing like a coach or coaches had showed. I don't know if he was talking about statistics or whatever, but that chop blocking off as far as causing injuries he said there was no major difference it's not as much as that as people might think but here's the bottom line though that i'm sure i Kerb, Kerb, I, di- I disagree with you coach and the reason i'll say this it's a perception issue i mean you might be right the facts are mm-hmm. but from the georgia fan standpoint there been cares four- what the fans <laughs> oh, i thought you talking about the chop block you mean the no, georgia, the, georgia the, fans think they heard them did they, they because how many times have we seen georgia's leading inside guy That's go true. down I in the under, first I, I series i apologize to the fans on that no, hey, no. but i don't think it, they could get they could get chopped by um, any team but oh yeah but it just feels like every time the georgia plays tech when they go in you see big john Atkins or whoever's in that interior line, uh, you know, a Kwame Gathers mm-hmm. or, a, you know, a Jennings, anybody in the middle, all of a sudden in that first series, there's a guy hobbling. Like he's, limping he's, around. Limping and around. Then, he's taken out of the game. And it's, like they say, it's clean old-fashioned hate. So it feels like they're going after your best interior defensive lineman on the first series. He's out, and then you got to – you. And, of course, the Georgia fans are going to think it's on purpose. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's why I say the perception is there. And the mm-hmm. coaches can point to any stat they want to reassure their team. But the fans are going to believe that it's a dirty pool. Yeah. And yeah. Well, we – but, you know, we cut people off. We, we do, too. We, 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 yeah, we do. Right. I mean, how are you going to block, does how you gonna block <laughs> some guy going to, the, to, to that area unless you try to get your face across him? But hey, the, here's the bottom Swift line. Swift laid a guy out last week. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the yeah. bottom line for us, though. So. The real comforting thing is our offense is actually going to spend the night over here next Friday night and show up in Sanford Stadium. So that's a, to me, there's a bigger discrepancy between their defense and our offense than there is our defense and their offense. Okay. So I think that's – and our kicking game. So two of the three issues in the game, we've got a tremendous advantage in my part. And the other one is I don't see – athletically that much difference between us and tech offense and deep. but the scheme makes a little difference just because of the fact you're going against something you don't see but real challenge to kirby and coach tucker you know they got a lot of pride with their defense and coach johnson does too with his his system and you got to give them credit they were down and out they looked like they were getting oh, yeah. like an eight count on a 10 getting knocked out and they've won four straight but you got to temper that enthusiasm with a little realism. They haven't really beaten anybody with a unbelievable record, really, except maybe Virginia. I mean, you look at the teams, Alcorn State, uh, you just go through it. But, of course, we haven't actually played the toughest schedule either. But I give credit to Johnson. Um, I told you, I mean, without question, they, they really saved their year with a big turnaround. And right now they're playing with a lot of confidence, which – if they were coming in here on a two or three game losing streak, it'd be a lot different. But now, all of a sudden, he's telling their kids, "Hey, we go in there, they turn it over a little bit, we keep the ball away from them, we you know do what we can, we can win." Yeah, and it'll save their season. Uh, speaking of savings, I want to tell everybody to go out to Athens Ford. I will tell you more about that in the show later on. But I just want to get in your head that this is the week to go out to Athens Ford because of their uh, Black Friday deals. They're unreal. You get the free TV. I, I, I can now share the details with you, but I'm going to do that a little bit later. Uh, free TV. Free TV when you buy nice. a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, real quick, want to bring up Academia Brewing Company. If you are wanting to watch this game, you know, not everybody's going to be in the stadium that early, you know, especially if you're part of the UGA alumni crowd here in Athens. Swing out to Academia Brewing Company. They have the giant TV, uh, screens, two of them. They have the uh, – uh, places where you can sit and watch. You can reserve seating. They have the uh, pint glasses that you can get with a Savage on them. And they have fantastic beer. I'm enjoying their IQ IPA. Uh, we're drinking these in uh, honor of Jake Roos not being here. So I know this is one of his favorites. It's one of mine. Only IPA I really like. I'm not mm. a huge IPA guy. This one, I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah, so it is good. I can sit there, good. Drink, I can drink this all day. It is that, that all-day beer. So. I was planning on it. Is yeah. there something wrong with that? <laughs> you, you got work to do. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're right. Uh, so, big shout-out to Academia for sponsoring our show. And, again, if you're looking 
if you, you get family in town, we have a neighbor, she's got all her friends out from California, and we're like, look, get to academia, show them a good time here in Athens, great place to eat, come by Champies, get the best fried chicken you can, get the best tamales, and if you're in a hurry. Uh, the new thing that they have at your pie, because while I'm talking about food, I'm, I'm starving, you can tell. Uh, when you go by yourpie.com, you can actually set up your order, customize it. If you want your Nono's Italian uh, uh, sandwich, you can customize it exactly like you want. Put in, place the order online. It's ready when you get there. Nice. Same with the pizzas. You know, same with the gelato. You know, you just tell them what you want. You can make the combos. But it's customized and ready when you walk in. It's phenomenal. This is a your pie. Your pie. Oh, wow. It's, it's, uh, so you tell them what crust you want, what sauce you want, what cheese you want, all the toppings. And it's not, oh, you want another topping? That's an extra dollar. You want another topping? Oh, that's another mm. dollar. You know, they don't keep piling them on there. You want them all? Just toss them all on there. Uh, it's the best pizza you can get, hands down, thin crust, cooked in a super hot oven makes the crust really hard and crispy it's fantastic and all the stuff is fresh you watch them they're not taking a bag of uh you know uh, pre-cut stuff like you see at frozen Subway. cheese yeah. or something exactly they're actually back then about cutting it up i've seen them do it uh and there's more toppings i didn't know that you could put that much stuff on a pizza so it's phenomenal get a chance swing by your pie or academia academia for the game your pie after the game maybe so, yeah, uh, particularly this week, we got a 12 o'clock kickoff. That's right. You can go watch Iron Bowl uh, over here at Champions or Academia. But I want to give, as you say, a shout out to Champions because, you know, I get to interact with the players and coaches some occasionally. And I know that uh, last week on Sunday, uh, Josh and Amy took some food over there to the uh, coaching staff and their families. On Sunday night, the families come over to the kids, meet with the coach, come see their dads and and everybody. Yeah, and they you have, still a, exist. have a little dinner there, and they they slammed them with some good groceries. And and also on Saturday, they actually ca- they catered the whole uh, recruits for the all the recruits that came in. And 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 one of the things that everybody liked about it. From, from listening to the, the coaches there was uh, they brought some wings over there for mm. those kids. So everybody hears about champions, catfish, and, and uh, chicken, but their wings are great. And Thursday, they're actually catering the whole team after practice. So when these kids oh, finish wow. practice, Wait, Thanksgiving? Of, they're going to – I don't know what all they're going to give them, but they're going to give them something to take home while they go. And one thing about Kirby, lets the kids that are close enough, they get to go close to eat Thanksgiving dinner with their, their people. They just got to be back here. Friday, so it, it'll be good. So that's my good commercial for champions today. What you know, what whether it was what is close enough? I'm curious. Is that I'd middle say Georgia? Around, or? I'd say hundred yard, hundred hundred miles or oh, okay. so. But you know, it's it's good for the morale of the team, and they they don't take advantage of it. I mean, you know, and what happens? A lot of the kids go with that are from out of town, go with their their buddies and. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Now, I don't know that that's true this year. I know in the past they've always done that. Were they going to do it this year? I don't know, but it's good. But uh, I remember up at Marshall one year, I had two kids come in my uh, – I told them, I don't want anybody leaving town. I want you around here. We got a, we, we're actually playing in the playoffs. You know, the one AA playoffs start this week. And I had two kids come in my office. And usually when they come in your office, something's wrong, you know. And yeah. They both had their it's heads injured. down. They're two big old country boys. Both of them look like being Cleveland, not quite as big. And <laughs> this one old boy had his head down. And I said, what's the matter there? What's the matter? And he said, Coach, you know, you said you can't, can't go out of town and everything. He said, we've been hunting every day of our lives on Thanksgiving, and we really want to go hunting on so, <laughs> And I said, I was so glad that they were that nothing was wrong. Yeah. I said, sure, go on. You know, I was but they wanted to go hunting on that Thursday. That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I mean, you know, that That's was awesome. I mean, that was good. So, I, were they from West Virginia? Yeah, they were, okay. they were over there about Louisa, Kentucky, about 50 miles from there. But I was so relieved that they hadn't been in some bar fight. <laughs> I, I said, just go on and go. Man. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, I, I was expecting a punchline. Oh, yeah. That? I thought, I thought there was going to be I some mean, trouble. Well, there was. Uh, there's plenty of times people been in your office. Like this one kid came in there one time, and he was probably the most bashful guy on our team, and I didn't really know much about him it's off the field because, you know, he's so quiet. And he said, Coach, he said, I'd like to move off campus. And I said, really? I said, you know, you've lived in a dorm for three years. And he said, oh, I'd like to get that check. You know, I like to live. And I said, well, where are you going to live? And he said, well, I, I got a deal set up. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, Coach, he said, I'm, I'm dating this woman who's got three kids and she needs some money. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> that was pretty bad. But I, yeah. I, I said, "Come on, William, you dating a woman with three kids?" <laughs> yeah, what are you thinking, man? <laughs> did, did he move off campus? Yeah, hey, I, I let yeah. him do it. She, he st- he hung in there with her for a little while. She was just milking him for the paycheck. I think. Mm. You got like that. I, 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 this to me is the favorite part of the show is when we get stories of real life things that happen because to us as writers, to fans, they're football players. They're not, I don't want to say they're not people, but you only know them as to what they can do on the field. And we sure. spend all day, every day discussing, you know, how much a guy's going to play, what's his ceiling, you know, how can he contribute. And you tend to forget these are 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids with lives, guys who are getting engaged, guys who are having children, guys who are trying to go through school, trying to figure out who they're going to be. To me, I love the, uh, uh, the human side of it. Especially, uh, you know, because. We ask them the same questions, yeah, more or less. About football. We get the same responses. So when we can hear these little little stories of when this happened, then yeah. it's uh, I don't know. I love it too. Yeah. Well, it's just, the the, the all time story about a guy getting ready to going on Thanksgiving and coming back. You know, I told him you guys got to be back Friday at such and such a time, and we had this kid that got back and he was late you know and i was raising cane about it. chris selfo was raising about it and finally he, he comes in there and i said what happened he said well i was driving down the road and i hit this horse <laughs> i said you hit a horse what? and he said yeah he said it might have been a pony but he said i said was it a deer <laughs> he said yeah he said no it was a pony oh my god <laughs> And then we finally figured out he got hit. He hit a deer, but I mean, it was, I mean, it was so funny we couldn't even get mad. I mean, he was just—I was glad he didn't get hurt. But uh, <laughs> that is, oh man, yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> well, it, that was also one of the things I always. Uh, Guy can't make up something like no, that. No, 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 not that, at that, all. That, you, you, he's not lying. You got to get that's. Uh, and this is not a shot against Kirby Smart, but that's why I always like when Coach Rick would take the team to the uh, swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, when mm-hmm. they had a day that was raining. And remember, yeah, he, didn't have, he didn't have the indoor facility sometimes. So when it was raining, he's like, well, we can all get in buses and go, you know, maybe to the, uh, the Falcons Brand, facility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a lot of times, you know, they would go over to the uh, Ramsey Center and basically just work out in tennis shoes. You're walking through formations mm-hmm. and stuff like that because they didn't have anything indoors. Then they got that quasi indoor yeah, piece yeah. of garbage that didn't do that a whole lot. We of also form. ate inside. Yeah, that, the yeah. multi-purpose room. Yeah. But then there were certain days like, okay, after we've done all these two-a-days, we'll go over there. And, again, it wasn't so much that it was a break from the – because, you know, we like covering practice. That's what we do. But getting to see the human side of this, you know, watching a guy who, you know, like a Cornelius Washington who could just, you know, rip your head off if he needed to, edge, you know, look scared, getting to the edge of that high dive, you know, and seeing that these are real kids, you know, the guys that could, you know, a walk-on who could do three flips off of a high dive. You know, you're like, who, who is this kid? So, to me, it's the – and I guess I'm just because it's Thanksgiving, you're kind of – I'm kind of introspective. I'm like, we're very lucky to do what we do. And I, these kids are going home, and you get to see all of a sudden an offensive lineman who's going home with a defensive back, you know, because mm-hmm. they've become – friends and they're not even in the same recruiting class but they're they're roommates they're buddies you know and it's they're going home to together see who's exactly. like good buddies i don't say and clicks but who, who become yeah. friends and it's like you forget that these are kids and all we're concerned about sometimes is you know who's going to win who's going to cover you know the be back all this other stuff and it's nice to see the uh real life side of these kids sometimes mm-hmm. uh that's why I'm, I'm very appreciative of when the georgia athletic uh accounts if you will give insights into camp. They give insights into the locker room after a game. You see Kirby Smart jumping around mm-hmm. with the team, seeing that celebration. Because lots of times the guys walk off the team, walk off the field, they're hugging guys from the other team. They're thanking them, you know, good games, stuff like that. They're shaking hands. Then they get in the locker room and go bonkers. Yeah. And it's like, let us see more of that. Let us like see. Like Rodrigo that. getting a scholarship after yeah. the Notre Dame I mean, game, if, you know, if, stuff like if that. If you didn't think that was a oh, greatest that was, part of last uh, season, uh, then uh, you're uh, just a horrible yeah, person, you know. good. And, you know, Kirby – People don't realize this, but, I mean, you talk about Coach Rick taking them. Kirby took – one day, took every, they just dropped everything and went bowling, you know, but they didn't put a lot of publicity out of it. But they did do some publicity on when they went to the camp 
over there at Camp yeah. Sunshine, and then they also – And they don't talk about football. If you go to that right. camp, cover Camp Sunshine thing, don't right. ask them about football questions. They want to talk about being at Camp Sunshine. Right, and the same thing about the ESP kids. I mean, they, you yeah. know, the special kids, they had the special needs. Yeah. De- dealing with, See, we love seeing stuff bring, like bring that. Bring the yeah. uh, policemen out there and the first responders. It's and, great. Oh, and when Kirby's – yeah, they have a, a first responders appreciation day. And we'll see all the policemen out there. I think that's great. But again, they don't advertise that enough. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, I shouldn't say advertise. They don't promote document it. Promote. Not, well, well, they're not promoting it. Yeah. Just show us what is going on. Yeah. We, it's like I don't. It feels weird. The that human I have, side. It's you not know. your business. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel weird that I have to break the news that today is Military Appreciation oh, yeah. Day. I'm like, wait. But uh, the Kirby also takes those freshmen each year up on to the lake. Yeah. And puts mm-hmm. them on a boat, and you see those guys doing crazy stuff, and you're like, this. You know, what does a 19 year old kid want to do but get around? Get on a boat and go mm-hmm. wakeboarding. You know, this is fantastic. So I do appreciate the fact that we're getting to see some of that. Mark Rick's group did not do that enough. They didn't mm-hmm. kind of show us enough behind the scenes. We're, we don't get to see a lot of it, but we do get to see more of the humanity yeah. part of these players, and I appreciate that. Because, and again, we'll, if, if they lose to Tech, everyone's going to be livid, you know. Well, And if they do win, then, well, that's what you're supposed to do. But, well, again, we, we take out the fact that these are kids who know. know the guy across the way. You know, we're talking to Jonathan Ledbetter, and he's like, yeah, I mean, I know I know guys over there. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I played against them, yeah. you know. So. You know, last year when they uh, played Tech over there, every year of the year, uh, Kirby uh, and takes the team over to the uh, – uh, kids hospital, hospital yeah. and they also uh-huh. take them to the children's uh, health care of Atlanta yeah, what they the, ta- they what do the a good JV job. teams and bullpup teams used to do right the, right we well, used to play a game like that but they, yeah. ta- they actually take the team over there and they take them to the shepherd clinic too so one bus goes to the to the children's health care of Atlanta area over there in Emory mm-hmm. and then the other one goes to, so and that's great for the kids to be around those people that are less fortunate and it's also a tremendous boost for all those people in the hospital to, to have the Georgia team come there. I, I do want to jump back on track and actually talk football. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, your thoughts on Justin Fields this past weekend about his performance. Who? Justin Fields, <laughs> SEC what, what number is freshman it? <laughs> of the what, week. Number What number? I believe he wears one. Number one. You know, I, the first thing I want to do is – compliment Jake Fromm on the season he's had but to have this guy breathing down your neck all year and to perform at the level that he's done is a really test good testimony the kind of competitor he is because everybody sees how good Justin is when he gets showcased like he was even though it was against a lesser opponent but still you know to arc 157 yards like that and then throw one over the middle when the guy's running but the one thing I would like to dispel for all these people that talk to me about, uh, you know, hey, Justin can't go to a second read and he doesn't recognize this and all that. Let me tell you something. We don't have a second read in our offense. You really? throw the ball to the first guy, and then if he's not open, you throw it to the check down guy. Jake is tremendous at throwing to the check down guy. Uh, Justin is a tremendous runner. He has a tendency when the first guy's not open, he'll go to the run. We don't stand out there and read, hey, I'm going to throw to one, I'm going to throw to two. I'm gonna... People are doing that. You're in fantasy football. We don't do that. <laughs> We're a running football team. We don't develop our quarterbacks to read 59,000 people. So people are trying to justify the fact that one guy's playing more because he can read. Hey, I'm telling you, both these guys know exactly what they're doing. They know our offense inside and out. But we don't do a lot of reading with our quarterbacks, I'm telling you. And you don't in college. That's just the way it is. Is that common or is it just – Because you don't have that many different reads. Hey, the basic read, if he's open, you throw it. If he's not, you you get rid of it. That's the way it is. So, people are – I I just – hey, you can get on me about everything you want to. But if I'm right – if I'm wrong on that – We'll have everybody over at Champions that, that wants to come, and I'll pay for it. <laughs> so, because we we have, we have seen that. That's ridiculous. He, he knows what to do. He knows everything, and so does – and Jake knows it too. But the difference is Jake just throws the check down automatically, and this kid goes to goes right away to maybe run it because he's so good at running it. So, And he hasn't had near the opportunities either because you got to look at it like this. When he's in – 
he knows he's not going to be in very long just because yeah. he hasn't earned that right based on the other kid. So he tries to make the most mm-hmm. of every opportunity, whereas you got a little bit of free wheeling there with Jake, which he's earned too. So, so well, we go- got we got to overanalyze this deal a little bit. Both of them are tremendous, and I was just glad that, that uh, Justin had a chance to show what he could do Saturday, and he he's going to help us down the stretch here because of the proofs in the pudding. I mean, you know. Well, I will say two weeks ago you told us that he would – because we were complaining about him not getting into a game. And you're like, look, he will get in a game. He'll just be patient. The coaches have to have confidence in him. And once he does, you know, he'll show out. And, and you were right. He, he got his chances. He – most snaps he'd taken in a game so far this yeah, by, by five, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he rushes for 100 yards. He throws for over 100 yards. Uh, that pass to Miko Harbin was a thing of beauty. And it's not like he comes in and takes Jake Fromm out of it. Fromm was five of five. I mean, mm-hmm. what, what else can you expect? I, I guess, Coach, I'm going to overanalyze it because, again, like I said, that's analyze what we do. It. Analyze it. Well, it's more of a question. If you have a quarterback whose tendency is to hit the check down, you have a quarterback whose tendency is to tuck and run because he's good at it, both basically playing to their strengths, how does Jim Chaney decide which one he wants to use? Well, a lot of it depends on what the defensive look is. If they got a really agile offensive, uh, I mean defensive front that can really rush the passer, then, you, you know, the, and your protection's not going to be able to hold up, then you might use a little more agile quarterback. But at this point, it, it's going to be – I don't think we're going to try to get down well. this guy does this best. I just think there's going to be selective times for him to come in, short yardage, goal line, uh, those kind of deals more than maybe the whole series, you know, uh, like – like yeah, this the game, like the game, but to get, like the game against you, yeah. that's where he stayed in. But yeah. the thing that helps you, though, going into the, this game and the Alabama game is they got to work on this all week because they got to work on that wraparound zone keep he did and that, you know, when he's in there, you can't just play the run. You better be ready to throw the deep ball in. Mm-hmm. So that takes away from the preparation for Jake, too. So the, both of them give you a lot to worry about because, you know, Jake, Lit, he lit up uh, Georgia Tech last week, yep. mm-hmm. last year, and had a great first half against Alabama, too. I, yeah. I, I do want to give you uh, credit before I talk to about the angel list here. You and Jake on this show have stressed a thousand times that Justin Fields is not just a running quarterback. Ad nauseum. Y'all said it a lot. Um, I want to give you credit because we saw him. I know, and I, I mentioned the throw the Miko Hardman. But to me, that was not his best throw. To me, his best throw was the first touchdown to Riley Ridley. Guy in his face. Oh, yeah. In, in his chest. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the photo I have. I was about to say, you have the picture, the photo That guy's of face it. mask is buried in his chest. Yeah. He had just released the ball. He stood in the pocket, took a shot. And, again, like I said, his, rea- his uh, instinct, you know, maybe tuck and run and get out of the way. Uh, but he stood in the pocket, took the blast, and then threaded a needle. So, to me, it showed two, uh, three things. He can – Stay in the pocket till his guy gets open, make a hell of a throw, and remember that was goal to go. Well, that's, he's that's got a problem. Georgia, now. he's had. got it made now since he has your approval. Well, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, hey, we're you, ready you to guys rock were, and roll. <laughs> well, uh, yes, he, he, he's he, he may play now because he has the Roddy Nabulzi stamp oh, yeah. of approval. He, he may start actually, <laughs> from what I, what we hear. Just I'm kidding. Just, saying, just kidding. Just say that the, I thought that throw told a lot about what he could yeah, do because that was, nice. that was a – I don't want to say an NFL throw. I hate that that terminology. But for the folks who said, oh, well, he's a runner. No, he stayed in the pocket like your Drew Brees, you know, your Tom Brady's, you know, your guy who yeah. knows he's going to take the hit but gets the throw off just like well, Jake Fromm would do. So, I was impressed. About, that was a great the thing pass. about yeah. both of these guys. Jake is a better runner than people know. He Amen. Can, if something's in trouble, he can – Get, get get out of it and do it. And this guy is a lot better at knowing what to do with the offense. And he made some good checks at the line. He knows what to do. But you know, uh, Jake's got a year and three quarter head start on him, running all about fifteen hundred more plays too. So, yeah. and that experience is really prevalent too. And it's going to help him. Like he's what I've said when I started this, the, the the way he was able to keep Justin off the field by the way he played all year is a real testimony to kind of co- competitor he is and the kind of quarterback he is. But there, it's just a a good situation to have two guys like that on your team, and uh, both of them will help us win down the stretch here. 
I got another question for you, but first I'm going to uh, tell you about this is the the angel list. Yeah, the angel list. Athens Ford is doing something. Last year, if you went out there and you bought a new vehicle, you got a, a free TV. They they were doing that again, uh, but this to me is more impressive. Last year they had all these bikes set up. These. Uh, uh, brand new bikes and when you bought one you could put your name on it and you know or just say anonymous and they donated all these bikes to the children oh like kids so, bikes kids bikes okay. they had to, all these uh, bikes I mean they had them under a giant Christmas tree there were I don't know 50 100 there's so many bicycles out there that they uh, gave to kids in the community so that everybody had one well this year instead of doing bikes they're doing what they call the angels list and it benefits the Salvation Army of Athens and so every time you go out there and you buy a new vehicle uh, or buy, buy a vehicle, because um, new or used, uh, sold through November 15th, I'm assuming it's from November 15th through December 15th. So we're right in the middle of it. Start on the 15th of this month, going through the December 15th of December. Athens Ward will donate up to $100 in toys to the Salvation Army Angel Tree. So basically they had this tree and they have all these toys underneath it. You buy a vehicle and they give you these little wings and you can put, you know, your name on it or leave it anonymous or uh, in memory of somebody. Oh, cool. And you put those on a present for a kid. Right. So I thought that that was a neat thing that they're doing out there. It's um, at Athens Ford at Athens Ford. Uh, so they've teamed up with the Salvation Army in Athens to get gifts. Very nice ones for kids in the community. Um, uh I can tell you from uh, having been out there working with these folks over and over again, there's they do so much in the community, so much charity work. And, again, they don't uh, talk about it enough. It kind of uh, – I, f- I feel like I have to kind of uh, pull it out of them sometimes, you know, just get their attention, you know, and say, hey, look, talk about the – like the, the, we did a show out there. and the, I mean, um, yeah, we did a show, and they didn't mm-hmm. even mention all the bikes they had last year. I had to actually go over there and take pictures of the bikes. And say, guys, look, look at what's happening here at Athens Ford. If you come out and buy a new or used vehicle, you know, with a lifetime powertrain warranty, you're going to get this giant television. You know, they have these huge flat screen TVs that you got with it, you know. But they're also going to donate a bicycle to a, a kid in the area. You know? That's great. And I'm like, so you're getting the TV too? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought yeah, you were saying no, no. TV was last year. This year is. No. Uh, no, uh, that, was, that was the uh, Black Friday deal. So that was quite impressive. So uh, actually. Oh, we got some questions here, or what's the deal? No, we, uh, I have to apologize, everybody. Our Facebook Live feed went down. The audio was not going through, so we're just recording the podcast today. So it's uh, well, can, can, hey, hopefully. But you know, both of us had a good situation last week. Uh, I was saw some people out. I was eating, and uh, this guy comes up to me. He said he's from South Georgia, and he'd come up to the game. And one of the deals every week is they put our podcast on and listen to it on the way up here. Oh, so yeah. that makes you feel good, Roddy. I yeah, mean, I'm yeah. sure you told me somebody – you saw somebody over there when you were going in the store and they told you the yeah, same thing. Yeah, going to Publix and had some folks coming up from uh, uh, Tifton. So they come mm-hmm. up and they listen to the show each week. So uh, Appreciate that. I, I know you're listening. I appreciate it. So. Yeah, but, um, let me let me say just from a historical perspective. Uh-oh, don't <laughs> ask me something I got to remember. <laughs> um, so you know the reason people forget things? They What's never that? learned it in the first place. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's why you got to concentrate. That's what you tell everybody. Ask them two things. Are you coachable? That means you listen to people. And can you concentrate? So I'm going to concentrate. What oh, are you okay. going to ask me? I, I was, I was going to just get your feedback when I was to tell you from what I remember growing up and seeing a film. You know, Georgia had during the Dooley years from Kirby Moore to the late Andy Johnson, Ray Goff, uh, James Jackson, like – Running quarterbacks, and this is how I'm looking at it. Quincy under you. Um, who else would be an excellent passer, but could, let's say, even Stafford in 06 could tuck it and run if need be. But Murray's good enough. For yeah. Him. He can make people miss. And, but uh, when Fields, and I know it was against UMass and this and that, but he it looks like he's um, almost a robot out there when he – like, I haven't seen this before – Except out of, like, Cam Newton, to be so honest. So, what I mean, you don't have that, any that idea is how TV. big he is. I yeah. mean, he's really a very physical, you know, and we don't give away a lot of things about the weight room here, but the kid squats 500. Now, I oh, mean, wow. you can't you can't make Pounds? 
pounds. No, nah, we mean pounds. Just, We're not talking about tamales. <laughs> he, well, that he, I can do. Five hundred squat. I think Joe. I think Jake's like four twenty-five. I mean, they're both really powerful, explosive guys. But you, you saw that that power that he had on the goal line when he got down um, there close and just Burma rode the guy. I almost took him in the end zone, but but. And I like some of the comments about some of the players made about, hey, we've been waiting to see this. We see this every day in practice. And, you know, uh, so that was good, too. But, uh, you know, he's a non-assuming guy from a standpoint. He, I, I give him credit. He's, he's sat back and, and he hadn't liked it, the fact he hadn't played. But he, he hadn't been a guy over there to, disconcerting to the other guys and crying and moaning about not playing at least when i'm over there i'm not over there that much but i, t- I tell you he's got a good attitude and again jake has every reason to be uh you know a little bit ticked because he's such a good player and then the guy's coming in on him but it's not because of anything jake hadn't done but mm-hmm. boy he's such a tremendous leader and a good overall guy and he- he's a team guy too so both of them realize that each other the way they push each other helps helps them get better yeah, I mean, that, that competition is a lot. If you're Jake Fromm and you're on the sideline knowing that you've completed your passes, you've scored, you know, thrown some touchdowns, and you watch uh, that rushing touchdown he had that mm-hmm. uh, Justin Fields had, that spin move oh. was, was beautiful. And you're like, 6'3", 230? Okay. That's what I'm saying. He okay. doesn't move like I've yeah. seen move before. And, and I mean, then on that run, he had a 47-yard run, and it uh, – yeah, he, stumbled his lo- he stumbled a little bit. He's a little faster than he looked out there. But but, but is he still he's, he's, he's fast. That, my, 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 that was he's exactly quick. my point. He didn't look like he was moving that fast, but he picked up almost fifty yards. That's what I'm saying. He he, <laughs> he like glides like nothing you've seen. And before. so Fromm's like, well, when I get in, I better be on Johnny uh-huh. on the spot. You know, when I get back out Which there, Which he's done, and he yeah. has. I mean, he's got a he's he's. A, he's very likely might set the record for pass completions mm-hmm. percentage in a, in a year. So he's doing everything you ask. I mean, uh, I don't think either one of them were going to have a lot of success against LSU, but, you know, the games are – I mean, they just dropped 66 points on a team. You, you're 12-0 and 0 against the SEC East. You've, you've, you've beaten everybody. You it's know. 13 now. And how many How many do one in a row? I guess uh, last yeah. week we don't put UMass in the in no. the SEC. Oh, I, we I, had some people in here from Florida from Florida State today. You know they beat uh, BC, so they're all fired up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, isn't that right? Yeah, it was a close one. Hey, how are you gonna do against the Gators? We're pulling for you. Um, I'm hoping my mother has a Gator over there. We're split. We're a family. Well, that's a tough <laughs> deal. Yeah. Either way, but everybody agrees on champions. It's place yeah, That's right. We appreciate y'all coming in. <laughs> Go with a bag of home food. Uh, you asked about the TV, and that's part of the Black Friday deal over at Athens Ford. So on November 23rd, 24th, and 26th, 23rd, 24th, 26th, you get a 43-inch smart TV with every vehicle purchase. Wow. 43 inches, almost as tall as me. <laughs> <laughs> so the 23rd, 24th, and 26th with every vehicle purchase. What days are those? Is that um... That's every day but Friday. Friday's no. the 25th, isn't it? No, the, it's every day but uh, Sunday. Uh, Sunday. They're okay. closed on Sunday. Well, you said the 25th. What? 23rd, 24th, and 26th. Yeah, so beginning Black Friday. Yeah. All right. Through so Monday, excluding Friday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Monday. Correct. All so, right, let's do it. And uh, the, That's some a of the heck vehicles, of a deal. Yes, but the deals on the uh, vehicles are even better. The Ford Fusion, $7,000 off. Ford Focus, $8,000 off. Jeez. Yeah. So, uh, and that's on the 23rd. Then on the, uh, uh, that's in the morning from 9 to 1. Then from uh, 12 to 4, the Ford Explorer, $10,000 wow. off the one I just bought. And I was about to say, you should Ford have waited Escape, a little bit. 7, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, actually, I didn't get a new one. I got a used one because they have that lifetime powertrain warranty. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. And uh, mine came with all the bells and whistles. Yeah, my I've been son, in my, it. My son, yeah, my son <laughs> found out that we, we didn't realize this, that the back seats are heated. For real? Yeah, I know. Really? I don't know. <laughs> really? So I was, I was teasing the boy. I'm like, I got warm seats up here. <laughs> I and I hit the button. He's like, well, I got a back seat right here, old man. <laughs> and he hits the button. I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, usually uh, it's just the fronts that have But that. anyway, and there's more uh, deals from on the 23rd, and they have uh, service offers. Point being, you need to go to AthensFord.com slash Black Friday. Hit on their deals. You just can't beat it. So Athens.com. I know we, got a, we mentioned our advertisers, and again, 
it's you know it's this Thanksgiving week, and I'm just very thankful for all of our uh, advertisers for doing such good work for us. Yeah. Uh, also, want a big shout out to Aaron Overhead Doors. They do a ton for us. They sponsor the Georgia Three Two One Report, which I write on the site. Uh, they have not learned their lesson yet. They're still sponsoring it, uh, but I, I appreciate it. Yeah, oh, whatever, man. man. You're that's, producing, that's a, though. You're coming that's through. That's a good piece. Well, that's I'll just say they, hey. they also uh, sponsor this Carnac podcast. The Magnificent. Well, <laughs> I've been right and I've been wrong. When I'm wrong, I point it out. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I was, like a lot of folks. The only yeah. person that predicted Hill would start. Yeah, I did. I was right on that one. Yeah, you were. I, I'll, I'll pat myself on the back there. I, I'm, I'm more prone to pat myself on the back when Jake's here because I feel like, again, I feel like I'm in competition. Uh, Jake's okay. sitting here and he's putting out all this great recruiting information. I'm like, well, I was right about something. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I have to jump in there. But uh, you know, you can't one up Patrick because you can't dude, write a book. I, I cannot <laughs> write a book. I, 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 I can. Write, I write one column a week and feel like it's you know it takes me four hours. He knocks out four or five stories a day, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, he's got a memory. Good. He does. Good but if you get a chance, swing his, up. Historical. He does. It, it puts stuff in perspective. You always have the. Uh, uh, stat that uh, you won't find anywhere else. What was your one you had earlier? Yeah, today? the the uh, you mean the article or the uh, article? Well, I, I put out those clips and um, did something on uh, you know this is the the seventh anniversary of uh, Larry Munson passing away. That's right. Uh, so I threw out a little video, but the stat that I did was, I, and I found this on my own: um, seven hundred and one yards on sixty two plays against UMass. That 11 point, I think it's 3 1 or 3 2 is the second highest ever in a game. At least I went as far back as uh, 1959. Before then, stats See, are kind of. I've gone back like 10 years, and you go back. No, man, I got, I got to go back as far as I can. Really, we didn't even. I mean, th- th- fourth quarter was just. We You're right. right. We didn't hardly. It was. Any. It was about fourteen. It fourteen or fifteen at one point. I'm well, like, I was a little. I was a little annoyed by that because I, when they got the ball with eight minutes left, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a seven minute, fifty nine second drive, and then they'll take a knee and end the game. But I had predicted Georgia to cover, and I needed to yeah. go down and kick a field I, goal. It was, I think it was just me yeah. and one other guy on on the staff picked uh, yeah. UMass would cover. But well, you knew Doctor J was going to be here, yeah. and Chris Chris Berman. But and the reason I. Uh, Predicted Georgia to take the over in that game. I mean, what was it, 41 points that we settled on? Uh, on the side, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I, 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 Georgia would cover the spread on this simply because when you put the second and third string guys in there, they want to score too. Yeah, I remember and, you telling and, me and that. And people say, well, you know, Kirby's going to call the dogs off. I'm like, you going to call James Cook off? Hey, James, just run it yeah, and then 50 down yards it. and then down <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then no. we'll let somebody else. If James, How did you know that he was so fast? You you, made, you said, hey, he's coming on strong, and he did pretty good. Did Kirby tell you he was going to play some? He did not tell me that, but we, we, we did a little digging, and the fact that uh, people talk – when you talk about – the player saying, this is what we see Justin Fields do in practice. Mm-hmm. We've also had players say, this is what we see in James Cook. There's a reason Rivals had him ranked five-star. Now, I'm but not I saying like Rivals is always right. I like talking about the guys who are going to be red and the guys who are going to play and all. But, hey, we look at this freshman class, and, and you can attribute to this, uh, c- contribute to it, Patrick. Really, where would this team be without depth-wise these, these oh. freshmen that we have? It's incredible how they've really come in and played, isn't it? And, and Adam Anderson at one point was actually – Leading the team in tackles. Yeah, I mean, in the level that they're yeah. playing at, you know. Cade, that, Cade Mays, come on. You got Cade Mays and, and Hill. And here's the point right now that really my mouth-watering deal of the week is a guy that's coming on stronger than three rows of wild onions <laughs> is Jamari Salyer. Mm-hmm. He, he is starting to fill his oats out there. They're playing him at center and guard, and he has made – tremendous strides here in the last couple of weeks so much so that hey watch out now this guy's can contribute here down the stretch i just don't know what you're gonna do with cade mays jamari salier trey hill when you got isaiah wilson on one side and thomas on the other and then you got ben cleveland you got schaefer who's been pretty strong too i mean uh, you know, Kidley, I mean, that's his. You got Erickson and uh, Condon coming up, too, and then yeah. you got these recruits. So, I, I mean, we're really, you know, like we said last week, Renaissance is on, but we, we're going to have our hands full this week and next week. But uh, that's why you play. Every game can't be a lay down. I mean, you yeah. got to handle some adversity. And uh, this will be the kind of game you need a total team win from a standpoint 
one out of every six plays going to be some kind of kick. Let's do a good job in that defense. We got to make them earn their stuff. Hope they get a couple penalties. Hope they get some lost yardage plays and make them miss their turn. And offense, just go out there and stretch your stuff. It's like you got a new suit. You want to go out there and let everybody see that baby. <laughs> Saw your uh, thirty snaps after the four games combined. This is along the line because it looks like he's also on a kick block, but. Um, the four games combined to that uh, one play, and then he had 30 against against UMass. So kid, yeah, kid's he's, gonna be a beast. Oh yeah, he's he's. All right, uh, coach, give me your mouthwatering player this week. Is it Jamari Sawyer? You're gonna go with somebody no, else. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Good. I don't know. He's ready for that. I, yeah. I would say at this point, I would say one of our two backs are, are gonna just really shine Saturday. I don't know which one it's gonna be whether it's Holyfield or Swift. But I, I think our power running game is going to overwhelm Tech. They, they've got a defense that ranks in the last quadrant of the country on third down, and that's going to be the key in this game, us getting them off the field on third down or at least making it fourth and more than four because they'll go for it if it's less than four, and then us making first downs on that situation. So I would say one of those two is going to be my mouth-watering guy. Yeah, one, Patrick? Mm. I, I'll tell you one thing. I, I really well, – Let me just ask you this. Can I do an offense and defense? I'll okay. come back to my okay. defense. Go just, ahead. Just because you're in the Hall of Fame, right. that's it. I, I will come back to my defense, but go ahead. And I'll just say from an overall perspective, this is what's been on my mind. And if I could throw this out there, picking Georgia games against the spread, I'm 19-7 and seven the last two Strong. seasons, four in a row. Are you betting on them or just no, them? no, just just Dude, just for 19, work. Nineteen seven, you should be playing. Nineteen and seven, a lot different but, when you're putting your own bread up, man. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I really like Georgia this week, and and I'll admit it. First, uh, although the line when it came out at what seventeen, eighteen, it was a good four or five points um, higher than I thought. But I just really think what Coach Donnan said. That oh yeah, Tex they're gonna get they're gonna get their yards they're gonna get some points but Georgia's offense is just powerful and they'll uh, so who's your player my player player that, of the week that's gonna that you just think is gonna have a big game I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with McCole Hardman I say right. re, on right. receiving right. and returning they're they're not good at covering kicks Otis Reese. He's looking for Otis. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's, I, I think that and this is not. Anything against LeCount or Reed, I just think against a running team like this. Yeah. Uh, and I, I hope that they don't get to him. I would. It would be a good situation where, you know, hey, Roddy, he only had one tackle. Hey, that's great because they stopped him at the line. But I just think that uh, – and it's it's risky. I mean, how often has he seen this? Yeah. His assignments. But just the way he hits. Oh, yeah. Hey, he just, and guys. he'll come up, he too. Just goes, that's my point. He's going to be coming up a lot. He yeah. just goes to – sees glass and splatters. Yeah. Uh, I think I – think uh, Richard Count will have a good game too. Both those guys will do good, but my my defensive player is going to be uh, Walker again. Mm, I just think he one. really had. A I thought about that. game last year, but would they and run what, away from him? Well, they can, but he can run you down. And another guy that might get some reps here. I don't know if he will or not, but a guy that hadn't played a whole lot, but is really fast and can emulate what you want at linebacker, where you don't have as many keys a regular game. We might see McBride in there a little bit. You know, with hmm. Monty Rice being out. His, wow, his speed, right. his speed could be in there and help you. He won't play a lot, but he, he might not even play it at all. But just watch out for him. That right, sounds good. good deal. All right, that is all the time we have for this week's show. We're gonna have to wrap it up here. Uh, we hope everyone has a fantastic Thanksgiving. And speaking of Thanksgiving, got a lot to be thankful for. We Definitely. do. We, uh, you had a great season. Um, hopefully, that will continue on through the Georgia Tech game and the. Uh, uh, Alabama game. We will be talking about Georgia Tech and Alabama next Tuesday. Uh, tune in at noon. Hopefully Facebook will have worked out their issues and you can watch the show live. A uh, big shout out to Athens Ford. Get out there to AthensFord.com uh, forward slash Black Friday deals. Uh, big shout out to Aaron over at Doors. I kind of got sidetracked talking about them sponsoring our show, but they are the best, biggest Georgia fans you'll ever see. So swing by Aaron over at Doors. A-A-R-O-N. Uh, when you're on your break, be sure to get your your pie or come by Academia Brewing Company. It's fantastic. And, of course, shout out to Robert uh, Wall out at Statham. Uh, he's the uh, big superstar over at Cable East. They sponsor our show for no good reason. And, Robert, we really appreciate it. Again, we are very, very thankful. And, of course, 365 Game Day, who normally shows our show, uh, shares our podcast, but they couldn't today because – Facebook is being – they lost a billion dollars, as Coach said. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will talk to you next week. 
that's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens.